Well, hello world, long time no see. Um, today I am with Mr. Matthew Marks. What's up, Matthew? Good afternoon, Ken. Doing well. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Okay, so guys, Matt and I work together. Um, Matthew handles uh, the beaches area along with a couple of colleagues. Um, Matt, when did you first move to Panama, sir? I moved to Panama in 2009. I'm going on 14 years now. Look at that. So the guy's an expert, and I moved in 07. And today we're going to talk about Buenaventura. We're not going to try to sell you Buenaventura. We're going to try to help you answer some questions that you probably have. And the idea is that this is kicking off a series of area reports that we are going to talk to experts like Matt, like Joaquin, like Catherine, like all of our team. We've got a fantastic team at Panama Equity. So let's get started. Buenaventura. Matt, in a, in, a, in a word, one word for Buenaventura, what would you describe it as? Luxury. Yeah. yeah. No, it's nice. They got great, great properties out in Buenaventura. So let's walk people through. I'm thinking about buying in Buenaventura. So uh, first of all, where is Buenaventura in relation to, let's say, Panama City? Yeah, so it's an easy ride just up the Inter-American Highway. Uh, you know, about hour and 45 minutes, two hours away from the city. And uh, it's just, a, it's a haven for a lot of locals that live here in the city. You know, you'll see a mass exodus on Friday afternoon, everyone heading out to their beach property. Typically that's Buenaventura for the upper class. Uh, you know, it, everything's around the community. It's a very self-sustained community as far as once you're on site, you don't really have to leave. You know, you have, you have, you have markets, you have restaurants. The golf course is, is the jewel along with, with the uh, beachfront. Cool. So you mentioned locals. Is it just locals or what's what's the mix of people out there in Buenaventura? Yeah, you know, it's, there, there's a real good mix. Uh, you do have a lot of locals, a lot of Panamanians that make it their weekend home. But then as far as expats go, you know, I've seen a lot of Americans, Canadians, uh, Australians, South Africans. It's a real mix. that, And now you're starting to have more full-time residents. Now that there's the private school that's opened up in the area. Okay, cool. So, you know, I mean, you've been selling real estate for a while. You show different areas. Why do people gravitate towards Buenaventura? And if they say they want to look at Buenaventura, where else might you show them just so they can have some points of comparison? Yeah, you know, typically when someone's coming to Panama for their first time or they're just checking out this area of the country for the first time, you know, we'll look at Coronado first. Uh, it's a little closer to the city. You know, it's a little over an hour away. And from there, that's kind of like the bullseye on your dartboard. You know, you're only 30 minutes away from many of the other major, you know, gated beach communities. You know, you're, you're right next door to, to uh, Gorgona. You also have Punta Barco on the other end of Coronado. And as you go out, you're going to check out Vista Mar, Rio Mar, uh, Punta Caello, uh, Playa Blanca, and then, of course, Buenaventura. Okay, so a whole string of beach communities kind of starting right. like Coronado, Gorgona area. And just to put it in context, guys, no traffic. You know, you zoom out there on a Thursday. Um, and Panama City to Coronado is what, about an hour? Yeah, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, to, you know, depending on uh, your rate of speed and, and who's driving. <laughs> sure. And then you said it's about an hour and 45, so about half an hour from Coronado. So you live in Buenaventura, or I should say, back to the other part of that question, which is, I'm looking at Buenaventura. What else should I look at? What is the most, you know, the comp comparable uh, beach community to Buenaventura? Really, it's it's a matter of what you're looking for, right? Now, if we're gonna go with comps, you know, I like to call Bihau like a mini Buenaventura. Um, you don't have as many weekend renters out there. In fact, you shouldn't have any because Bihau does not allow short-term rentals as part of their HOA bylaws. Um, the other community I might look at is like Casa Mar. You know, it, it's developed by the same developer as Buenaventura, just on a much smaller scale. It just has the one restaurant, has a nine-hole golf course that's actually illuminated. It's the only golf course in Panama that has lighting as well, so you can play oh, at night. night golf. Yep, that's correct. I'll lose my ball either way. Daytime, nighttime, doesn't make a difference. Yeah, that's um, Okay, cool. So Bihau and Casamar, you would say, are kind of the equivalent, not the equivalent, but, you know, it's it's not quite apples to grapes, but it's like apples to oranges, right? Exactly right. You know, there's only one Buenaventura. Buenaventura encapsulates all of those factors. 
Uh, it's an, an enormous property that's continuing to be developed. It has the best golf course in the area, 18-hole uh, Nicholas Design Golf Course, three different beach clubs, probably some of the best beaches in the area. Uh, it's huge. It has something for everyone, including the equestrian club, a zoo. Whereas when you go over to like Bihau, uh, it's a nine-hole golf course that you play twice for seven for a par 72. Uh, it has just the one beach club. It has several swimming pools. And then Casamar even shrinks that down even more. So it's more con more uh, condensed. Whereas sure. one of the takes the best of all of those communities and wraps it into one major community. Yeah, it's a bigger footprint too. How do homeowners associations compare? Um, let's say you're in Buenaventura. And of course, you guys, there's multiple developments within Buenaventura. There's, you know, condo projects. There's uh, homes. That's pretty much your two, you know, property choices, but like, you know, let's go a condo project um, in Buenaventura compared to its equivalent in like be how price per square or no homeowner association is a holding fee. Sorry. Yeah. So your homeowner association in Buenaventura, there is a premium, you know, it, they're selling more of a lifestyle than, than anything else. So, sure. so, you know, on a, on a two bedroom condo, your, your homeowner associations could start in the four hundreds. Um, whereas in, in Bihau, you know, it may be about a hundred dollars, $150 less. It depends on the area of the project you're investing in as well. Mm. Uh, you know, as you alluded to, Ken, you know, there's several different properties. There's, there's Punta Arena, which is closest to the water and closest to the beach club. Then you have Marina village, which is overlooking the, the brand new Marina yeah. and out towards the ocean. Uh, Vela Mar are, are single family homes that start in $2 million range that are right on the beach. Uh, but then you have single family homes that are on the that are on the golf course and you have villas and you have apartments. There's something for everyone. So for the homes, though, let's say, you know, like entry level Buenaventura resale home, smallest model they got, but still single family. We're still talking right around a million still. Yeah, you, you know, probably start around 800,000 and then okay. it goes up from there. Cool. So 800,000. And again, Buenaventura, guys, we're starting the top here with this beach series. Buenaventura is nice. Um, so you don't have to spend 800,000 for a beach house in Panama. Don't worry. But if you do, it's going to be nice. Um, Hey, Billy Carroll, we are big Billy Carroll fans. Um, and Pete Clement, thank you also for commenting, we love, uh, comments and shares and all that good stuff. Um, so 800,000 gets you probably what a four bedroom house in, um, uh, Buenaventura. Exactly right. You're looking around okay. three or four bedroom range. Cool. Um, and then, you know, of course, you know, maids quarters and just all the all the luxury fixings you'd be looking for in, in this type of community. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like nice, nice bathrooms, high ceilings, yeah. great outdoor areas. I mean, you, you get it all in Buenaventura. What I'm trying to do is is put it in some context for people. So I spent 800 grand on a nice house in Buenaventura. What are my homeowner association going to be on that more or less? Yeah. On that range, you're going to be looking around, you know, Let's call it seven eight hundred dollar range, and it can go up from there. It really depends on the size of your lot as well. Eight hundred dollars, you guys. I mean, the U.S. That's like a three thousand dollar homeowner association right there. Now, caveat in Panama, many of these homeowner associations don't carry huge balances, such that if you do have major works, <laughs> that's more for condos, though. You know, like when you got to repaint, everybody's got to pony up you know, 500 bucks or something and that happens every four or five years. Buena Ventura is, was well-built is being well-maintained. So you don't, to my knowledge, I can't think of the last time you had a big special assessment for the home, like a, a like a house owner, right? Matt, did you yeah. see anything like that? So even, even within the last, I, I, let's call it four oh. months, you know, they did some major road work in the community um, and there was no special assessment because they did have that money in their coffers. Cause they built it well to begin with. That's like the whole deal. You know, like I started this company in 07 from my bedroom. Um, now I'm from my home office. Ta-da. Um, point being, um, where was I going with that? You got to buy in a good project or else you're going to be paying for it. You know, you'll, you'll buy cheaply, but then it's like, I, yeah, yeah. I'm paying homeowner associations on stupid stuff. Like redoing my pool three years in or replacing an elevator 10 years in, you're not going to have that with a good developer. You are going to have that with a lousy developer, but uh, we won't name any lousy developers on the internet, but uh, 
you can send us an email. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So back to Buenaventura. I'm thinking, all right, what do I do? Like I'm living in Buenaventura. What is there to do out there? You did mention some of the awesome things like equestrian club. Let me tell you guys, sorry to interrupt, long question, um, and starting to answer it myself, but I like to surf and Buenaventura is the the one thing I can think of that they don't have mm -hmm. is surfing within the community, but whatever you drive 10 minutes, you know, and you go down to like from there, Rio Mar, Rio you Mar. know, like, I mean, there's, it's all up and down the coast, but just not in Buena Ventura. But Hey, if you have young kids, you kind of prefer that there's not big waves crashing. So you live in Buena Ventura. What's your day to day? I mean, where do you want to start? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned there's the private school. So if you are moving out there with a family, there's a school right at the entrance of the community that was right. built by the residents of the community. So your children are going to be attending school with their neighbors, which, you know, has a real nice sense of community. Totally. Um, you know, from there, you, you've got the amazing golf course. Um, I, you mentioned the equestrian club. I, it's very rare that I drive through the community. And I don't see people just riding horses around, you know, around the area. There's a designated bike lane. So if you're a cyclist, there's plenty of room to cycle around. Um, and, and, you know, as we mentioned as well, the three different beach clubs, you know, you have one beach club with just an enormous swimming pool, uh, swim up bar. You know, that one gets real busy on the weekends. That's more for the uh, residents that come out on the weekends. Then you have the other beach club that's attached to the hotel. And uh, that's the photo that many people probably have already seen on the Internet with just a long pool that, that ends out into the beach. Yeah, uh, and then the third beach club is really just a couple of food trucks and the beach where you'll you'll find a number of residents gathering for the sunset. Love that, yeah. And guys, for the record, uh, Matt didn't really know what I'm going to ask him. Like, this is not rehearsed. I'm just trying to play like you know devil's advocate or like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing out here. Um, okay, so Buena Ventura, and what else can I ask you about? So pricing. We talked about entry level house pricing. What about, you know, what, what do you have to have to get that small place, the little pied de terre in, in Buenaventura? Entry yeah, level. I, I mean, let's mention, you know, you're looking for like a one or a two bedroom, um, nothing too fancy. You're still getting in. We have a one bedroom loft that starts around 300,000. Okay. So 300,000 is going to be about your minimum investment to get into this community. Cool. Fair. That's not that bad for what you're getting. And then what about the aftermarket? Let's talk about rentals. Do, can you can you rent in Buena Ventura? Are there any homeowner restrictions there? That's actually one of the best things about Buena Ventura. Um, you know, beyond being able to rent out short term, long term, it's always in high demand. But inside the development, they have their own property management company that you can enter a pool. So if you're not living in Panama full time, and, you know, you just want to enter into the pool, you know, short or long term, they can handle that for you. OK, cool. Have, do we have some clients who have done that? We do have some clients that have done that. Uh, we actually even have a few properties that are listed on our website currently that are part of that rental pool. OK, cool. No, I like that. Um, you know, the good news is Buenaventura has been running a hospitality business for a while um, be careful about people that are just starting a rental pool, uh, because it's, it's a tricky operation to manage, to do it fairly, to account appropriately, uh, to allocate the leads, not to like somebody's, you know, cousin, um, kind of thing. So there's considerations there. And Buenaventura, I would say definitely, um, has been doing that for long enough. So cool. All right. Let's see here. What else can I ask you? So real estate market, like, you know, is it, is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? How much um, of a spread would you say in terms of offer price versus asking price? Yeah, that, you know, that, that one's a little more difficult to, to answer. It really depends on the market you're looking for as a pure investment you know, the, the prices are a little higher than what you would expect for some of the other communities. But Buena Ventura can ask for that because there's such mm -hmm. high demand. When the developer starts a new project, they're typically sold out the day they put the shovel in the ground. So what does that mean for resales? You know, your resales are going to be pretty strong as well. Um, and you can justify it with the rental return because there's such high demand. Buena Ventura is not subject to some of the other communities as far as seasonality. Um, does it get affected during rainy season? Of course it does. There's less people going out to the beach, but it doesn't drop off a cliff like some of the other communities do. 
Sure. Yeah. Fair. No. And, and, you know, it's a double-edged sword when you're in a development and they're constantly building that does mean new inventory, but also means new activity, you know, a larger market of people coming and looking um, sort of casting a wider net from a, um, from a sales and marketing standpoint. So cool. All right. What about um, sort of conveniences in terms of hospitals? You've already mentioned schools, supermarkets. Mm -hmm. I think there's some on-site shopping in Buenaventura within the community. What, uh, you know, what's around? Well, let's address what's inside the community first. You know, you have a deli gourmet, uh, you have a, um, a Felipe Moto wine store. So, you know, all of your, you know, little um, chips and, and you know, goods. That, yeah, specialty goods, uh, wines, beer, liquor is all going to be available on site. Um, several restaurants on site. There's also the main hotel that, you know, you can access the spa. Um, so you have all those little conveniences there. For a larger supermarket, just outside of the community, you have a Super 99. You do have a Novi. So if you need some um, hardware, under construction supplies, you know, do it yourselfers. And then, and then the Aroja Pharmacy, also right outside of the community. Yeah, that's kind of all the big, big retail spots right around there. And then you drive into Coronado, twenty-five minutes. You got everything, you know, movie theater, etc. Um, even Penanome the other way. And then, okay, so let's let's talk about lifestyle stuff. Let's from Buenaventura. Hey, let's say I want to drive forty-five minutes. Um, what can I do within a forty-five minute radius? If I'm looking for a little activities again, you know, the limit that you, you address the, the surfing, you know, surfing is going to be about 20 minutes down the road, maybe less uh, down to Rio Mar, El Palmar, also want a really great surf area. Totally. And if you want to go up in the mountains, El Valle is only about 40 minutes away. So, you know, cooler climates, amazing views, more of like a mountain feel, uh, lots of nature. Yeah. El Valle is just one of the most beautiful areas in the entire country. No, El Valle is pretty, totally. And then, you know, the other way, 45 minutes, pop into Coronado, right? So it's kind of like we covered east, west, and uh, um, north. Would that be? North, yeah. South, you're getting in a boat uh, and driving out to who knows where. That's Deep right. waters, good fishing, sail fishing. No, you have to drive a little further to do some sail fishing. But um, no, well, I mean, unless anybody's got any other comments, um, I feel like we kind of covered everything and the idea is to do this with you, with some of your colleagues on all the different beach areas, just so people can start to get a picture of the differences. And of course we will do some live videos from out there One, you know, Matt and I'll hop in the car and uh, go shoot some videos from there. Uh, we've got plenty of properties listed. So, you know, you can see um, in and around Buenaventura area. So, Thank you all for tuning in. Matt, thanks for hopping on. This was originally not going to be a Facebook Live. So, uh, hey, good job. Um, appreciate you. And thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay.